everyone, welcome into Mint Condition. I'm Michelle Steele. A popular saying at the National Sports Collectors Convention is if you can't find it there, it probably doesn't exist. Well, we put that theory to the test as we walk the convention floor in Chicago to find the most unique and rare sports memorabilia. Here's what we found. We have the best LeBron James card in existence at the National. This is why we're here, folks. So uh, tell us, Ryan, why this card is so rare. Well, this card, um, being LeBron James, you know, the best player currently in the NBA, um, this card is uh, his best rookie card. It's uh, exquisite, um, upper deck exquisite, uh, really high-end product. Um, it has autograph, has a piece of game-used jersey, um, three-color patch on it. Um, there's only 23, 23 of these cards made, and this card being graded gem mint is the only gem mint in existence. So for most collectors, you know, that makes this the number one card out there. You've got a very rare item, a Michael Jordan birth certificate. Tell us everything you know. Uh, well, obviously, this is a you know very unique piece. Uh, we've never sold a birth certificate before, but Jordan's one of a kind. He's he, he's it when it comes to basketball collectibles, and uh, I think by uh, 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 by default, this has to be the earliest Michael Jordan collectible there is. His birth certificate. This just isn't any coffee table, right? What is it? It's absolutely a unique piece. It's four by foot, four by four foot coffee table on the game used floor from the United Center when Michael Jordan won three championships from 96 to 98. And it looks like that's the L? Or something? Well, it's, a, it's a unique piece. It, it may be a baseline piece because you have a little bit of two color correlation with the black and white. What's the damage on this? $4,000. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to save up. <laughs> yeah. So this ball looks pretty worn, pretty dirty, pretty used. Uh, that's part of what makes it special, right? Tell us more about it. Well, this is um, actually the ball from the 1903 World Series. Anything from the first World Series makes it very significant. This ball is a ball that actually has the provenance of coming directly from Cy Young. And so if you look at the base, which is not that attractive, it's kind of a cheap base. In the 1950s, he donated it. But um, the interesting thing about it is the inscription on it, which is not that easy to read, but basically is in his own hand. It's verified by you know third-party experts that look at signatures that Cy Young signed it and inscribed it from the 1903 World Series. So this is in fact, and I know you're going to get goosebumps when I say this, this is the actual game used ball for the last out of the 1903 World Series. All right, I'm here with, with Richard Quinn, and it's basically baseball meets pinball, but tell us more about it, Richard. What this is is a vintage-style baseball pinball machine that is designed for two people to play a real game of baseball just as it's played in a, on a sandlot or in any major ballpark in the world. Okay. One person pulls the bat, the other pitches, so I pitch the ball. Whoa. And so then we come back and we do the same thing again and, and again. Pitch. That's the general gist of the game. So Justin, you were the guy who painted the Ditka behind us. Tell us everything you know about the picture. How long did it take you to make and what are people's reactions to it? Well, this was uh, the original painting I did. Um, the originals typically take 100 to 200 hours to complete. Um, there's a lot of detail, as you can see, that goes goes into it, and the fans just love the motion, you know, in the, in the painting there, you know, that gritty and hard-nosed, you know, emotion that there there is, and the fans just love it. What's the hardest part of Ditka to depict? Uh, I mean, I've been doing so many paintings for so long. I mean, really, the the grabbing that emotion in, in each painting, you know, and and the fans really feeling feeling that in each each one is what I'm trying to capture. The World Cup is next year, but if you can't wait until then, you can get a trophy today from you. You actually have World Cup trophies. Tell me about them. Yes, I do have one. This one is from 1930 World Cup. The, these were given to the to the players after the World Cup. 
this is a mini trophy also only given to the players. And this is also a trophy that was given to the players when Uruguay won World Cup 1950. 1950? Yes. Wow. They, Uruguay won 1930 and 1950. And this one also was issued and given by the Uruguay Football Association to the players uh, because they won also both championships, 1930 and 1950. So if you can't make it to Brazil next year for the World Cup, now you know you can at least get the trophy. Anyway, that'll do it for this edition of Mint Condition. For more from us from the National in Chicago, definitely check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash ESPN Mint Condition. I'm Michelle Steele. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.